Are you looking for a blueprint to help you find your lane in success? There is no one blueprint, and everyone's journey is different. But by listening to the stories of others, you can and will find your own lane. This podcast is dedicated to helping you find your unique version of success and will arm you with enough information that you can cherry pick what works for you. You'll hear interviews of some of your favorite people and learn from their expertise in their respected fields. Everyone has the ability to be successful, and your host, Chloe Love, will show you how. This is the Committed to Success Podcast. Hello, my Clovers, and welcome to another episode of Committed to Success with your girl, Chloe Love. Now, let's have some Chloe time. Today, I'm going to talk about success in the sense of like your health and your your mental health. So many people think success is just about money and fame. And I've had people up here who've made a lot of money and fame. But what I love to stress on is that success is balance. So there are going to be so many reinforcements, so many examples. And you're going to hear me stress this with my guests over and over and over because everyone's road to success or even their road to health is different. Everyone's definition of health is different. How your health impacts you and your, your, your career, your relationships, your love life, your spirituality, it's different. And sometimes we don't think that that plays a big factor in how we're showing up in life or how it's impacting us from showing up in life. Veganism is a trending topic when it comes to health. Some people believe that hey, if I, if I become vegan, I'm not going to be able to get the nutrients that I need. I'm going to be hungry all the time. I'm going to miss out on good food and good taste. And then on the other aspect of it, some people have turned vegan and it was the best decision of their life. They feel better. They think better. They're able to move better. And they found vegan foods that are just as good as meat-based or dairy foods. I know it's hard to believe but I've tasted some of this stuff myself and I have been taking my own journey into taking my health into my hands. I'm going into my forties. I haven't gotten there yet, but I'm quickly approaching the finish line. And I want to show up at 40 in shape, in health, of course, being a household name by then, but I want to look good and feel good when I show up and in, in, in speak to you guys and deliver this content and give you Chloe time and give you these interviews. I want to be good, right? I don't want the sugar addictions. I don't want to feel uh, overweight. I don't want to feel uncomfortable. And when I say overweight, for me, it's a feeling of like swollenness. It has nothing to do with fat per se. It's a feeling of uh, weight that is not healthy. So there are some people who are technically overweight by the definition of the doctors and the health department, but they're still healthy. What I'm talking about is the unhealthy overweight where your blood pressure is high and your fingers are swollen or you're you're having like heart palpitations because it's clogged with grease and stuff like that. That's what I mean by that. So the weight of those things. It's like a double entendre. Most of you guys know that I come from the music uh, industry. I'm not a rapper, but I'd be having a bar or two and I like to drop them double entendres when I can. So it's the weight of carrying all those things on your back and what it's doing to your body. You cannot be successful that way if you're feeling those things. Maybe you're not. And I'm not here to tell you what you should or what you shouldn't do or give you health advice. But what I'm here to tell you is that whatever your health is, You need to align with it and you need to figure out what that balance is for you. You need to evaluate how the things that you're putting in your body is making you feel because you cannot be successful if you have not mastered that part. So I hope that you guys resonated with that Chloe time. I had to get that off my chest and out of my mind. Thank you for listening. And I look forward to see what you guys have to say (laughs) about that particular topic. Stay tuned for a quick commercial break. I will be right back, Clovers. Hello, my Clovers, and welcome to another episode of Committed to Success.
with your girl, Chloe Love. Today, we have an amazing guest, your friend of mine, Miss Jackie Reed. Jackie's known for being the first Black anchor on BET Nightly News, and you may have seen her on things like NBC, giving you guys the greatest entertainment stories, CNN, and much more. Welcome, Jackie. Hi, Chloe. How are you today? I'm doing all right. It's been a whirlwind day so far. We're only halfway through it, um, but these days have been busy in a good, good way. So I'm, I'm well. I'm well. That's good. always a good thing. Well, tell us a bit more about your, yourself, Jackie, and your career and the things you've done. Well, I am uh, from Atlanta, Georgia, and I started my, my love for journalism and news started when I was in high school. I was on my high school newspaper, literary magazine, all those things. And that continued in college, graduate school. And then I you know, started in local news as a reporter and anchor and worked my way, my way all the way up to you know, CNN headline news. And then I landed at BET, which you mentioned. And then when I got to BET, I kind of realized that I didn't really wanna do hard news anymore. It can be hard on you mentally to care, cover so much negativity all the time because you really have to delve into the details. And so BET gave me an opportunity to cover entertainment and so much more lifestyle. So I went in that direction after BET and started doing radio. And then when I came back to television after BET, I started doing lifestyle for NBC and entertainment. And most recently I decided to take my Emmys and become a lifestyle influencer in the vegan space. So that is yes, now with yes. my cool brand. All so amazing really things. <laughs> <laughs> All amazing things. All amazing things. It's so funny that you brought up the uh, like that that job at BET being hard for you because of reporting negative news a lot. I saw an interview when I was researching. And you talked about showing up to the scene sometimes and you would cry with the families and have to bring it together to show up that way. How do you separate the job from the person? How are you able to do that? I mean, just like anybody else, right? Whether you wait table, tables, whether you're a school teacher, whether you're a banker, um, no matter if you have to interact with people on your job, we all have personal things that we're dealing with, or we all have just our own way that we react to the world around us. Or imagine after, you know, the shooting death of Ahmad Aubrey when he was running, you know, just going out for a jog and they shot him to death and you hear that news. And as a black woman, right, you connect to that, you know, and someone who has black sons, you connect to that, but you have to go give a presentation that day. Right. Or you, have to, mm -hmm. it, 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 it is like that. It's like it, it impacts you deeply um, already because you, you, I didn't know him and you, you know, don't know him, but you know that story because it's happened too many times in our community. Now imagine having to talk to taking, already having that pain, then having to go and interview his family. Yeah. Right? Interviewing his mother and his loved ones and going to the scene of where it happened and seeing that up close and personal, mm -hmm. all the carrying that pain. I mean, imagine being a reporter uh, back in the day when Sandy Hook happened and all those babies were shot to death and having to go on the scene and interview parents as they're waiting outside because they had to wait to find out if it was their kid or not. And, uh, yeah, and yeah. doing those interviews and uh, like that. And, and tomorrow, what's the story? You know, tomorrow, what is it? And, and, you, and every day it's a new hat, it's a new tragedy, it's a family in pain. And so you kind of take all that in because yeah. you're experiencing it and it can take a toll on you. Do you feel like the need to bring that awareness to the, the, the public and to deliver the news in the most authentic way helps you with dealing with that? Like I have a job here to bring awareness. So does that help you bring it together and um, show up in that way for us? I mean, to me, it's important to let people know what's going on. I think it's Absolutely. important. It's just like the, it, you know, back in the day when Emmett Till's mother made the decision to let his body be shown. Yeah. You know? And as painful as that was for her to experience that she wanted the world to know, we do have to expose the ugly and the bad and the negativity in the world so that people can learn from it. So Absolutely. They can themselves from it. So it's important. 
but it's a tough job. People think that being a reporter and a journalist is so glamorous, um, you know, but it's not. It's far from. I mean, there's that side of it because you're in the public eye in the way that we are. Yeah. Uh, but it's a, it's a really tough job. It's a very tough job. Well, thank you for showing up the way that you have for us and bringing us the information throughout the years because you've done an amazing job. And I know, I know for me, I watched the news. I started watching the news because of you. So that, you know, if you weren't doing what you were doing, I wouldn't have been watching the news. So thank you for showing up in that way. Well, when you think you. about, when you think about success, what, what does success look like to you in your eyes? What is the definition of success? Authentic, authentic happiness. To me, you can have all the money in the world uh, and look successful on paper or look successful in other people's eyes. But if you are not happy, if you are not enjoying your life, if you do not feel feel fulfilled, then you are not successful to me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you think that there are some boundaries that you should not cross when it comes to obtaining that success? Absolutely. I think that you need to stay true to yourself. I think that you need to be kind. I think that you don't need to I don't think success should come at the expense of other people's failures. I don't think that you should step over, step on people to climb higher. I think that you should do the opposite and bring people up, lift as you climb. Um, I, I just think you should be authentic. I don't think, think you should lie. I don't think you should swindle people. Um, and I don't think that you should, you know, get engaged with criminal activity in order to be successful. There's a, a better way to do everything. There's a more authentic way. There's a more ethical way to do things. And I think we need to lean into that more. If, if, if betraying yourself or the values that you were um, raised on, or just, you know, if you're a Christian person, the values of, of your faith, if you're betraying all of that, um, and like I said, including yourself just to get ahead, then, then what are you doing? Absolutely. Absolutely. Which was going to be my next question, but you answered it. How do you keep your brand integrity intact? <laughs> and that's how basically you, you don't sell yourself short or you don't lie to people or lie to yourself. Those are all great tips. And people don't understand how important it is to hear that, especially from someone like you who have climbed the ladder of success and has graced all the, uh, the, the, the TV channels and the things that people want to do. They may think that, you know what, if I just do this thing, you know, I'll get there and then I'll get better. But hearing this from you will help people who are thinking about doing that thing that compromises their moral compass or that violates, you know, themselves. Like, you know what, Jackie didn't do that because Jackie just sat here and told us that she graced all these covers and she's done all these things by keeping her brand integrity intact. So I'm really, really, really happy to hear you say that. And I'm glad for the people to hear you say that and come from a brand like yourself. Yeah. So we had a convo about ADHD. And I was telling you, like, Jackie, I think I got ADHD. And I was saying it. I was telling you that, like, I've said it to other people and they thought that I was going crazy. And you were actually the first person who was like, girl, check this out. Do you feel this? You should take a test because I have it too. And it took me aback because uh, usually when you hear about people who have ADHD, you hear like they're not able to complete certain tasks or that it would hinder them from being successful. And someone like you who is so successful, how were you able to manage that with having ADHD? Well, I have ADD. I'm lucky that I don't oh. have um, well, I shouldn't say that I'm lucky. I just don't have the hyper part of the it. hyper part. ADD. Sorry, my apologies. No, 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 no. It's, but it's mm -hmm. the same. It's it's definitely the cousin. Um, just some people have the hyper part. Some people don't. I don't. Um, yeah. No, I don't. I have the hyper part. I don't have the hyper part. I have the the other part. I was yeah, saying the wrong you know, acronym. You know, the hyperactivity. I mean, you'll know. It's like yeah. You no, know, it's it, it's it's a different. Um, side of it. I definitely don't have that, but I definitely do have ADD, uh, you know, the lack of focus um, and, and just unorganized um, and just so many other things that, that come with it for those who know about it. For me, 
it was a problem because I didn't know that I had it for years. And one day I was reading mm. something like about seven years ago. It, I'm still new to this. Seven years ago, I was reading a magazine or something. And I was reading about these symptoms and I was like, I, this, this sounds like my life. And it, it comes with so much frustration because you feel you, you really beat up on yourself. Yeah what you lack and the mistakes that you made. I definitely was really hard on myself. I felt, you know, just, I, I did not feel successful at all. Um, and so I said to myself, let me go get diagnosed. And so I did. And, and I can tell you before I got diagnosed, I was in therapy and I said to this therapist, I think I have ADD. Um, and she was like, she didn't, she told me she didn't believe in that. Maybe it was something else. So there are a lot of people who are like naysayers of it. Um, yeah. But anyway, I went and got tested and sure enough, I definitely was diagnosed with it, which equipped me uh, with the ability to give myself a break and say, okay, my brain functions differently than other people's brains. So um, I have to give myself a break for you know, my room being a mess or not being at my purse being a mess or, you know, not being able to find things or being late, you know, to things all the time, which was just like, I'm just like, oh, I just would get so mad at myself all the time because I was like, why can't you just be better and do better? But yeah. once I got diagnosed and I realized and I started really studying and realized, you know, that my brain is different. So I have to give myself a break. I also opened up to giving myself credit for all the things that ADD has given me. You know, I have great ideas, right? Love and that. I have energy to do so many things. And so that, that other people don't have, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's me. And people will say, people said to me, I'm like, wow, you have great ideas. You know what I mean? And that comes from, you know, always thinking and always coming Absolutely. up with Absolutely. And so I realized that I would thrive as an entrepreneur, I realized that I would thrive making my own schedule and having my own hours and doing my own thing and leaning into that. Um, and so that's what led me eventually to the path of being an entrepreneur um, because I knew that I needed my okay. morning to be like my mornings need to be. If I, if I wanna get up at 5 a.m. and do yoga for an hour and then go for a walk for another hour, or if I just want to wake up early and just lay in the bed for a couple of hours, just to kind of let my brain just, you know, be at ease and just kind yeah. of meditate on its own. There's some ADD people that will recommend that for you, that you don't get up and get out of the bed and just start going, that you give your brain a moment to catch up um, and to wake up. And so just kind of learning those things helped me manage it better, helped me manage my life better and helped me like myself better. That that you, you will preach into the choir because as you know, when we talk, we come up with amazing ideas and it's just like, boom, 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 boom. And when I would speak to people, they'd be like, you know, you're some kind of like alien, the way that thoughts roll through your head and roll out. And for a while I felt like, I felt very isolated because even though it was a, a, a talent of mine, I felt like uh, people thought I was strange because they didn't roll things out that way. Yeah. And then I started meeting more people like me and I found out that we all were diagnosed in one way or another, whether it was moderate or low with ADD. So I kind of call it like the superpower. I'm like, it's, 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 it's low key a superpower, you know? Um, but being unorganized and all of those things are also things that I have an issue with. And when you don't show up in that way, it can make you feel unsuccessful no matter what you're doing and, or no matter how the world sees you. How do you deal with that? And how do you implement project management to make yourself feel more progressive when you're dealing with things like that and ADD? Well, I definitely have a planner. I'm someone who has to write things. I can't put I things love that. On. I have, I'm looking at it now. I have a planner that I look at every morning and every night. And when something happens or when I'm planning something, I try to the best of my ability. I give, give myself a lot of grace to write it in my planner so I can see there are moments when I'll like, I may go a week without looking at my planner um, and it, it will throw things off. And I love yeah. how I feel when I manage my time better, when I have my planner, when I know what's going on in my life. So that's 
one of the main things. And then, I mean, I just kind of, I try to give myself a lot of grace. I try to do the best that I can because when you're someone that has a lot of ideas and you know this, Chloe, you got a lot of pots on the stove. It's like, yes. And you may have seven pots on the stove, a really big stove, right? And then you're like, oh, wait a minute. Let me put these three things in the oven. Oh, but wait, yeah. I did. Let me put that in the microwave. And so I have a great, um, 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 what do I want to call her? She's like a, a brand representative that works with me. And she makes sure that when it comes to my ideas for working with brands that I manage that well, she's like, wait, cause she's, she's not that, that person like me. She's more kind of like, okay, wait a minute. What's the budget for this? You know, she's more dealing with the numbers and the facts and things like that. And then I'm lucky enough to have an agent who will say to me, hang on, hang on. <laughs> That's too many ideas. Hold on. You know what I mean? So I have people in my life who say, okay, wait a minute. Um, and even my sister, you know, is someone who is just like, wait a minute, slow down. So I have my wranglers, um, if you will. But other than that, I also know now how my brain works. So I catch myself. You know yeah. what I mean? I mean, you, I, I know you're going to relate to this. I'll sit and make a things to do list and girl, yeah. I'll be like page one. <laughs> I'm still like all these, eh, page two. <laughs> and all this got to be done by tomorrow. <laughs> girl, yes. It's like things to do today. And it's like, whoo. So what I try to Not do. realistic. Here is what, here is like my golden rule. Eliminate one problem or issue today and don't create a new one. Oh. Meaning, don't miss a payment on something. Don't not do this. Don't, don't, because that will create a problem tomorrow. So try, but try to deal with something that is a problem today or something that's an issue. Deal with it today and don't create a new one tomorrow. Because when you have ADD or ADHD, you have, there are a lot of issues that follow whether they be financial or, you know, you don't keep up with, with things, you know, your paperwork, documents, things like that. Girl, I couldn't tell you where my birth certificate is, <laughs> but it, it's around <laughs> here somewhere. But you know what I mean? It's like things like that. But I yeah. give, up the, you know, I'm not going to worry about that today, but I'm also going to make sure that if I, you know, that my wallet is organized. So if I know, like when I go somewhere and if I use my credit card, I put it back. Because there have been days where I'm like, okay, where's what I do with my credit card? Oh, and it's that's in my, me today. <laughs> it's in my jeans pocket, or it's in the coat that I had on two weeks. Oh, the ago, purse right? from yesterday. Come on, I gotta go to the storage. What did I do with those keys? Where's it's those keys at? Mm -hmm. And it's practicing practicing mindfulness. It is being present uh, in the moment and saying to yourself, okay, I'm in here. Okay, let me make sure that I put this here. Let me make sure that I put these keys up. Let me make sure that after I make this purchase, because I got a million things going on in my mind, I can stick my key, my card anywhere and not pay attention. Let me be intentional about the things Absolutely. that I'm doing in the moment. Um, Absolutely. And that make that that I have to really practice that, and it really makes a difference. It's like have you ever seen the movie with Samuel Jackson, A Long Kiss Goodnight? Yeah. It, yeah. It, and if you remember in that movie, he plays this like, uh, uh, like not a detective, but he's like somebody who helps you find people. An like investigator, a, uh, investigator. Investigator, yeah. Yeah. So when we see him and he's like, I'm taking on my jacket and I'm putting it on the chair. I'm putting the <laughs> keys in my pocket. I'm doing it. And he said, and she's like, what are you doing? He's like, I sing so I don't forget. I sing to myself so I don't forget things. And that really works. That's so cool. <laughs> you may not sing, but you say stuff. Okay, I'm putting my phone in my purse. Reinforce the action. I'm putting my chart, I'm putting my headphones here. Love that. Um, yeah, so it's, it's little things like that, little habits that I have put in place and I still have a long way to go, but I'm happier now because I'm not so, I don't beat up on myself so much right now because I understand that my brain is different. That's beautiful. And yeah. what a unique way to use mindfulness. When people think about mindfulness, I've never heard it used in that example. 
like yeah. for that. So that's a, a new way for people who haven't thought about using mindfulness for that. That's yeah. that, that was a really great tip. Now, speaking of tips, we've spoken a lot about health. Yeah. We've spoken a lot about dieting. I've complained to you and, 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 and let the people know you're not the one to complain to if you're not ready to make no change. You are not the one to babysit somebody who is sitting up here saying the same thing over and over and not ready to make that change. And that's what I really love about you, giving people that push. But you also arm people with the resources and the knowledge to be successful in that health journey. Tell us about 12 Months Vegan. Okay. I'm so proud of this program and I love it because, because I am vegan and I have my vegan sexy cool brand. I get so many people asking me about eating vegan, you know what yeah. I mean? The main thing. And how do you do it? What do you eat? I'm thinking about doing it or I tried and it wasn't successful. I have so many conversations with non-vegans. It is crazy. I even said to myself, I was going to get a shirt with uh, vegan sexy cool and like ask me anything. Because yeah. I'm talking to people about it. I don't mind at all because I want, and you know this, I want everybody to be vegan. Everybody. Absolutely. Um, and so I don't mind talking about it. And so I created this program, 12 Months to Vegan, because a lot of vegan programs out there uh, that, that guide you in how to eat vegan, it, it's just like, go, just give up all the meat, give up all the seafood, give up all the dairy today. Cold turkey. Everything. We try not to say cold turkey in the vegan world. <laughs> Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> but yes, because you know, we're all about the animals. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Warm and loved. <laughs> but Absolutely. Yes, but I, I had to learn to stop saying that myself. But it, it, it is a way to ease into it. So every month, and we started in January, but you can jump in at any time. We replace something in your kitchen that is dairy or meat-based, that's animal-based with its vegan counterpart. So okay. in January, it was butter. You may not eat butter every day, but you definitely use it. You spread it, you saute with it, you bake with it. There are so many vegan butters out there to replace your dairy butter with just for the month of January. Mm -hmm keep on eating your chicken. You can keep on eating your steak. You can keep on eating your everything, just not the butter. Who can't do that, right? You can do that. That's, that sounds easy enough. Fair enough. Okay. So then the next month for February, the month that we're in, you can either keep doing the vegan butter or you can go back to dairy butter. I suggest you keep doing it, but it's your choice. So you can just hyper-focus <clears throat> sorry you can hyper focus mm -hmm. on the items for february which are milk yogurt and ice cream so just those three things switch to vegan milk switch to vegan yogurt switch to vegan ice cream and what you're doing is you're learning you're trying different things without the pressure of what am i going to eat for breakfast what am I going to eat for lunch? What am I going to eat for dinner? What am I going to buy at the grocery store? You're just getting these things. And because now there's so many options out there, you may try a vegan ice cream and hate it, yeah. right? Try something else. Try another brand. There's so, Jermaine Dupri even has vegan ice cream at Walmart. I mean, there's oh, wow. so many options out there. Give them a try. Make it an experiment for the month of February. Most people love vegan milk. So they're already drinking plant-based milk. And yeah. Eat yogurt. You know, maybe you don't even eat yogurt, but if you do, try some of the plant-based yogurts out there. I don't know why my throat is so dry. Give me a second. Excuse me. <laughs> try some of the plant-based yogurts that are out there. The thing is, it's just dipping your toe in. And then the month of, of uh, March, forgive me if I'm wrong, but it, it, I think it's breads and desserts. So you can go back to drinking whatever milk you want, whatever yogurt you want, whatever ice cream you want for the month of March, or I suggest you bring it all along with you because as we go, we get into the summer months, which gets into the meats. So mm. I think June is chicken. I think July is beef and pork. I think August is seafood. But now Ooh. you're on this journey where you're learning about vegan brands, right? We have a Facebook group. 
where you're talking about recipes and different ingredients that you wouldn't have tried before, like tofu or something like that. You know, everybody, and there's this community that we have that's a great community that's really growing fast, but it's a, it's a private community because I really wanted it to be a place where people could be kind to one another, where they could yeah. talk, where they could give advice, and it's a safe space. So, yeah. you know, so we've got uh, seafood in August, and then I think September is cheese, which is one of the biggest things people tell me. I cannot give up cheese. Um, more than steak? Yeah, girl, more than steak. Cheese Ooh. is the one, because a lot of people don't like steak. You know what I mean? Some people yeah. don't, don't eat beef, or they just, they're not, like, it, it's a smaller group. Cheese is the one thing that- Cheese just, is it, that's true. Cheese is across, everybody, you know, wants that cheese. And there are great vegan cheese options out there. And then for October, November, and December, we end the year with October, it's all about breakfast items. So for the month of October, you're gonna eat vegan for breakfast. But look, through January, from January to September, you've been figuring out all these yeah. things that you like, right? Yeah. And then for November, it's all lunch items, right? All lunch through November, but you've already figured so much out. And then December, it's dinner items. And then in January of 2023, together, we're going to do the whole month vegan. And then beyond oh, that's that, so then you've learned along the way what you like, what you don't like. You've experimented with things. You've learned about brands. Um, you've learned a little bit about veganism and if this is something you could really do. And then, you know, after the month of January, you're well equipped with enough information to go to the grocery store and say, you know what, if, if you choose to do it after that, to say, you know what, I'm gonna get this, this, and this, oh, I love it. You know what you're doing, you know the brands, yeah. you know the foods you like. So it really is, to me, an easier way to step into eating vegan. That was really thoughtful. I really love that. That was something that, you know, we spoke about before you, you released. And I was like, please do this, do this, do this, because, there's so much like when people give you meal plans, it's so just cutthroat that it's really unrealistic for a lot of people, especially when you don't have a community to support you through it. When you don't know where to even start or what the, the good brands are and you don't have people around you that can suggest those things. So I love that you thought about it from all aspects of what a person would need to go through it and deliver it that way. I'm grateful. And I have, I have been, um, I just substituted butter because I haven't had time to try, <laughs> have to try the new ones, but I, I, I shared it through a lot of my friends. So I've gotten some suggestions on some good vegan butters uh, from some of my friends who are also doing the challenge. So I'm going to be trying that out and um, I'm already on plant-based milk. So I got a head start there. <laughs> I'm grateful for that but you really inspired me to show up that way, um, to wanna be healthier and that being a big part of success. Yeah. Because most people think about success and they just think about the money aspect of it or the fame aspect of it. But there's so many other variables that we ignore. Yeah. I'm guilty of my health being one of the variables that I ignore that I've spoken to you about. And uh, I really feel like this, it, I'm excited about it because I really feel like this is something that I want to master going into my forties and just showing up like Angela Bassett, you know, <laughs> Angela was goals for people like, listen, I was in my twenties, like, dang, Angela better than me, you know? So I want to show up that way. Yeah. I know that's the, the, the vain reasons of it. Of course, we want the mechanisms of the body to be working well and to have long life by the grace of the most high and all of those things. But there's a lot of vanity in it for people. So we're going to address that part. How do you feel like <laughs> veganism helps you show up like your skin, your nails, like your body? How do you feel like it adds to the beauty of people? You know, in two ways. I mean, I definitely feel like my body is better. Uh, people may or may not know a lot of the meats that we eat because of the antibiotics and a lot of the things that the animals eat. Um, and even what's in their systems, the trauma of them being murdered in order to end up on your plate, all of that you're, you're taking on if you believe in energy, right? Mm -hmm. um, so there's that, it cause, it, and meat and dairy, and we know this about dairy because so many of us are lactose intolerant. Yeah. We're supposed to be eating animal milk. Women don't make breast milk and sell it. You know, it's for our babies, right? Yeah. That milk is for that animal's 
child, that animal yeah. baby. Um, so our bodies reject it no differently than it's just like eating breast milk, drinking breast milk from another human, from a woman. Um, so it causes inflammation. And I had some issues because I'm a runner. And so I was having runner's knee in my knees. I have bunions. And so I was having inflammation around my bunions and my feet. Whenever I would put on heels, I had to stand for a minute and let my feet adjust. I was having issues getting in and out of the car and I went to physical therapy and nothing was making a difference. And this was right before I decided to become vegan. And after I did about a month in, all the inflammation went away. What? All of it went away. I don't for the life of me understand why people, especially black people are so married to girl. I got to have my ribs. Girl, I got to have my wings. Girl, I got to have my cake. But then we're ending up in the great, we, we talk about diseases that impact us disproportionately. And then we're like, I don't know why that's so unfair. Yes, a lot of it has to be, it has to do with how we're treated in the medical community, but a lot of it has to do with how we eat, you know? Mm -hmm. And that was really highlighted during COVID when so many of us were at risk before there was, you know, any kind of vaccine because diabetes, hypertension, all that heart disease, all of that is alive and well and thriving in the black community, right? We know this, but what we, we accept chronic illness more than any other group. It is amazing to me. We, it's, it's almost like we're proud of it. Girl, mm. we get up, child, oh, I can't get up, but let me get another plate. Let me get, <laughs> girl, you need to fry. Girl, that ain't this chicken egg. Girl, my mac and cheese and all the stuff we put in. We just brag about how unhealthy we are. Yeah. And the foods that we, and we don't even think about, you know, the things that are in our neighborhoods, particularly yeah. if you live in an all black neighborhood, maybe, you know, maybe it's um, a lower class. Um, I, I hate to say lower class, but a, 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 a low income. Low uh, income, yeah. Yeah, low income neighborhood that, uh, and the fast food restaurants that are there and all, you know, maybe you don't live there, but our people live there. And yeah. Look, Look at the politics, right? Look at it. And that food at a lot of those restaurants, it's the worst meat coming out of those factory farms, mm. right? It's the worst of the worst. And so we, we don't think about it. We don't think about where our food comes from. We just eat it. And so for me, I feel like my skin is better. I know my skin is better. My body is definitely better. I feel better. I have better energy. Mm. I'm just all around healthier because of it. And people will say, oh, you can't get proteins. Oh, that, no. If you learn how to eat properly, you know, then you'll get the nutrients that you need. People eat unhealthy on a non-vegan diet on a regular basis. Too much fried food, too much processed food, too much sugar. Yeah. Too much sugar. And nobody's saying to them, you're not going to get what you need on a non vegan you know, no. But all of a sudden you go vegan and you're eating more fruits and vegetables, you know what I mean? And legumes. Yeah. And beans and people are like you're you're not going to get what you need I, it's crazy so I feel better um on the, you know my body feels better but my spirit is also better because I know mm. that I am making choices that puts me in a space of kindness that I say to me I say you know what sure I I love a burger I love a steak but I would rather see an animal live its life um, and thrive, then have that burger. And so every time I eat, I feel like it's a form of activism and I feel like I'm doing something to make the world a better place. That's you beautiful. Yeah. That, that's very empowering, actually. Do you feel like since you've become vegan, that has also helped with like the clarity of your mind and, or, or when it came to the ADD, do you feel like going vegan has helped uh, your mind in any way? Well, I definitely think that the foods that we eat uh, can impact our mental health too. Absolutely. Levels in our body. So I definitely feel, I just feel more at peace. I feel more centered. Um, I just have more clarity in how I'm able to navigate the ADD. I yeah. definitely feel like it, it's made a difference in my mental health. That's good. That's good. I, Because I, I, I can see that. I haven't gone vegan, but just from uh, my own like sugar addictions and the things that it causes me to do and kind of adds the hyper 
activity, I can imagine kind of removing those things from my life on how that would allow uh, my brain to be a bit more free. Yeah. So that's why I asked that to see, because that's what I envision it would feel like, but I'm not sure. That's what I'm looking forward to, to see how that feels <laughs> as well. Yeah. Um, You've built mm-hmm. it. I'm sorry to hear you. I said you definitely will feel better. Yeah, well, you know, I'm going to give it a try. I have, I've already started, so I'm excited about it. But I do know some vegans that aren't healthy. Do you tell people how to be a healthy vegan? Because yeah. that's also important. It is because you can be unhealthy because you've seen it on the internet. A lot of fried foods, uh, you know, a lot of just. I see what my neighbors. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're not going to, you can be an unhealthy vegan uh, because veganism is not about health. Being a vegan means that you're an animal activist. Yeah. Uh, You, when you're vegan, it's not just about food. It's about everything. You don't do anything that that involves harming an animal. So my skincare products, my hair care products, my makeup, my clothing, I don't buy, I don't have leather furniture, none of that. I don't buy or I don't in any kind of way purchase anything that has, that, where, that an animal died. That's important for people to know. Yeah, it's not just what you eat. That's why I say eating vegan and some people will call it plant-based. Yeah. Um, some plant-based people will still eat fish and meat and things like that because plant-based means that you eat mostly uh fruits and vegetables it doesn't mean that you necessarily don't eat animals okay you eat vegan but if someone says that they are a vegan that means no leather shoes no suede anything no fur anything um in everything that you do i girl i read labels constantly but i'm so used to it now Oh, that's, that's a great distinction. I don't think a lot of people know that. I think they believe that it's just about, like you said, eating mainly plant-based, but they don't understand that it's a lifestyle. It is. And that brings me to vegan, sexy, cool. What can we expect from that? What are the topics that you cover? Well, vegan, sexy, cool is my baby as you yes. know. Well, uh, there is a podcast that we're relaunching this month. That's going to be really exciting. Um, and I have a website, vegansexycool.com, and I have a YouTube channel where you can learn more about 12 Months to Vegan, and I'm all over social media with Vegan Sexy Cool. So Vegan Sexy Cool is really a destination. What I wanted it to become, because it took me a while, I was like, yeah, I love this name, but what do I want it to be? And I'm vegan, and but what do I want Vegan Sexy Cool to be? And, and you're I'm, sexy and you're cool. Well, you know, you know. <laughs> But Let I me wanted, say it for you. Ah, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> no, I wanted it to be a place where people could go for uh, references, for products, where they can go. Yeah. Out, not just information, but what butter do, I, what butter do I recommend? What milk? Yes. Love? You know, if you want some vegan shoes, okay. I never heard of, that there were vegan shoes, but okay. Aren't they all made of pleather and look cheap? No, there's some fabulous high fashion vegan shoes out there. Yes. And I want people to know more about where they can find these things so they can explore it and then maybe one day you know just say okay I'm doing this absolutely that's a game changer right there I I I really can't stress on how much that's a game changer because when you're looking just like you said you're like well I don't want to change my style because I don't want to miss out on certain glam but you always look fabulous and when you're able to tell yeah you always look fabulous so when you're telling people listen everything that I'm wearing is vegan. So you can also still look fabulous and I'll help you because I'll give you the referrals of where to go. Yeah. That is going to be, that's such a game changer where people can try more because they don't have to figure it out. A lot of the times people figuring out, fig, trying to figure it out on their own is what deters them from trying. Yeah. But when you're like, listen, I'm giving you information, I'm giving you references and you have me, you see me. Yeah. I think that makes it a no brainer. It's like, all right, (laughs) I can do this. I can show up this way. So I feel like that's, that's, that, that's a really uh, big ad that you're giving us. And is there like a membership course or a a membership price or anything like that to. No, it's all free. And this is all free. This is all free. free. So no one has any excuse. No excuse at all. Just come hang out, learn, come to the Facebook group follow us on social media, come to the website, sign up for the newsletter, all that. Love it. Love it. Love it. And that will of course be in the show notes. 
Is there anything else that we can look forward that's coming from the Jackie Reed brand? Oh my gosh, so many good things coming. Nothing I can talk about right now, but there's some good okay. things. I'm so just be excited. on the lookout. Follow just you. The lookout. Just follow. Come Subscribe on. to the website so we can get the newsletters and all that good stuff. Yes, all that. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, this brings us to our last part of the show with you, the trivia part. This is the fun part. Okay. So I'm going to ask you a few questions that resonate with you. And the most uh, authentic answer, which we know you're very authentic when it comes to how you answer, you know, you give it to us. So my first question is, what is your favorite comfort food that you go to when you need that, that extra zhuzh and that upliftment? Uh, popcorn. Popcorn? You have a favorite brand? No, I like popping the kernels. I don't like microwave popcorn because there's so many, too many chemicals. Um, so I like getting out a pot, putting some olive oil in there, shaking it up. Nice. Cook, and then I melt my vegan butter. And I'll either, either put some truffle salt or regular salt. And I'll usually have like a glass of wine or a glass of champagne with it. That is so cool. Popcorn and make, and making it from scratch. Not the quick uh, um, microwave part. The process in itself must be soothing. Fridge. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. What is your favorite song that you put on to like when you're about to go do a power meeting or when you need to pull yourself out of a rut? What is that go-to song for you? Anything by Layla Hathaway. She is my absolute favorite vocalist. I love her. Her her. One of the things I, I mean, I I have I love her music so much. Maybe the Joe Sample album is one that just is very soothing to me. Um, but just anything with Layla Hathaway. I just I'm hearing her in my mind. <laughs> I can see I can see how it just changed your whole emotion. Like it just uh, put you in this place of just bliss. That's I love so much. She is absolutely my favorite vocalist. You guys hear that? You see the effect you had on Jackie? You better go check that out and put that on your playlist. I want to feel how Jackie just felt even thinking about it. <laughs> my girl. I love her. Love her. And what is your favorite quote? What is that quote that speaks to your soul? Oh, I don't know if I have a favorite quote. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> My grandfather, I don't know anyone who said it before him, but my late grandfather, my maternal grandfather uh, would always say, and my mother and I always say this, they don't know and they don't know that they don't know. Yes, yes. My favorite sayings and it just, sometimes you have to just kind of step away from an argument or step away from trying to save someone, mm. but they don't know. And then they don't know that they don't know. Child. There's so much power in that sentence. Yeah. There is so much power in that sentence. I love that. Well, this was fun. I had a great time. I can't wait for everyone to check out your brands and try this 12 month vegan challenge and be a part of a uh, vegan, sexy, cool. And uh, we would love to have you back for updates on where the brand is going, what you've done, what you got coming out and how we can be involved. Can you tell the people where's the best place to follow you? Ooh, Facebook. I would say Facebook um, because that is, that's where the Facebook group is. It's such a great community. I would say Facebook and YouTube. Okay. YouTube would be the base, best places to see the most current content because we're really, I'm revving things up on, um, on YouTube. And, you know, the Facebook is my main social media platform. And then I would say YouTube is secondary to that. Okay. So we'll also have those links for you guys to, to, to join and follow. Well, Jackie, thank you for coming. It was really great having you. Thank and you. we look forward to having you back. Thank you so much. This was great. Okay, my Clover, stay tuned for another quick commercial break. Welcome back, Clovers. What an amazing, amazing episode. Oh my God, I love Jackie so much. And just like the other people I've brought on, Jackie's someone who um, I get advice from, that I'm able to speak in a safe place of things that I'm going through, that I feel. 
And she always gives like pure, authentic, from the heart advice. And that's what I love about her brand. When we talk about brand morphing, authenticity is at the top of that list. And this is as brand morphed as it can be, is Jackie Reed. She is the goals of brand morphing. So I really want you guys to follow her and follow all the uh, the advice and the websites and the things that she has going on. And even if you don't want to be vegan, it is important to be able to implement those things and maybe remove some things to help you along the line in your road to success in health. You may not take the full plunge or you may, but it's good to be armed with those or equipped with the, that knowledge and the resources and the tools that she's dishing out so that you can show up a lot more healthier mentally, uh, emotionally, and physically in this life. Jackie gave some great jewels. You know, we got to talk, talk about the jewels that was dropped. And I want to make sure that you guys caught a few of them. One of my favorite parts is when she talked about they don't know what they don't know, and they don't know they don't know. This is something that uh, this was she she first heard it from her grandfather, but this is a saying of mine as well. They don't even know they don't know, and they don't even know they don't know that they don't know. Like we say this in my house as well. And what I loved about her addressing that is that when you're trying to prove something to someone or argue with someone or you get yourself worked up, sometimes you got to stop and think. This is insanity because they don't know and they don't even know they don't know. So why am I here getting myself so worked up when I have the power in this situation and I have the knowledge? If someone is receptive to receiving that knowledge, then you can offer it and you can enlighten them of the things that they don't know. But one great example she gave of that is to know when not to try to save somebody. Because not knowing and not knowing that you don't know is one thing, but not caring is another. That was a jewel that hit home when Jackie said that. Knowing when not to want to save somebody or not to try to save somebody because they're not ready. They're not ready to come out of that ignorance of not knowing. That was one jewel. And the next jewel that she spoke about when it comes to the things that you interact with, whether it be uh, meat products or uh, things that have bad energies that you put into your life. And if we're talking about our spiritual journey when it comes to success, you have to be able to decipher what bad energies you have around you, inside of you and out to remove those things out of your life. You cannot be successful if you continue to keep those energies around you or inside of you. That can be by way of things that you need to get off your chest, bad thoughts, bad emotions, things that you're ingesting, whether it be drugs, certain foods, sugars, anything like that. You really got to be mindful. And I love the example that she used of mindfulness. You really got to be mindful and, and have uh, deep intentions on why you're doing what you're doing with everything. Nothing is too little. Jackie talked about being intentional with putting her credit card back to make her life easier. She talked about doing that so she doesn't create another problem the next day while trying to solve other problems. I mean, these are all jewels that when you hear it in a sentence, it sounds so cliche, but are so impactful on your journey to success. And those little things that you're stopping from, ha from happening allows it not to add up and cause a domino effect when it comes to other things that you're trying to fix. So Clovers, I hope that you enjoyed this episode. I hope you guys got all those jewels. And until next time, click the notifications, leave a comment. Let me know what you liked, what you didn't like. Give some advice that you have to add to the, the episode because we love advice here. And, uh, you know, until next time, peace out Clovers. Thank you for listening to the Committed to Success podcast. Make sure to subscribe to the podcast, share, and tell a friend. Rate and review, and join us next time. Check out the show notes on the website for links to everything that was mentioned in this episode. For all upcoming events, services, and products, visit chloelove.com.